Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be focusing on Egypt hosting the leaders of five countries in the new Isle of Man city in the north coast overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. They arrived yesterday and we're going to be focusing on the goals and achievements and the results of such uh, a summit. Now before we start our discussion let's check out the main story making the news today. And President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi bid farewell to the visiting Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Qadimi at Al Alamein City Airport today. In a brotherly meeting, al-Sisi exchanged points of view with the UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed, Jordanian King Abdullah II, Bahraini monarch Hamad bin Isa and the Iraqi Premier over boosting ties and expanding cooperation in all fields. They also inspected the new Al Alamein City. That was the main story. Now, as you saw, President Sisi received the leaders of the UAE, Bahrain, Jordan, Iraq, and all these leaders are really talking about the uh, Arab initiatives, a lot of issues of mutual concern, regional and international issues. Now, all these Arab initiatives are looking to develop the intra-Arab economic development for these countries. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The five-way Arab summit in New Alamein City comes as the five Arab countries, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan, Iraq and Bahrain, intensify efforts to bolster economic integration. Last June, Egypt, the UAE and Jordan launched the Integrated Industrial Partnership Initiative for Sustainable Economic Development in Abu Dhabi. 
partnership focuses on major economic sectors, the most important of which are food security, fertilizers and pharmaceutical products. As part of the initiative, the UAE announced the allocation of an investment fund of 10 billion U.S. dollars for joint projects with Egypt and Jordan by the Abu Dhabi Development Holding to support and accelerate ensuing projects. Meanwhile, Egypt, Iraq and Jordan have intensified their trilateral collaboration over the past few years to enhance strategic relations between the three countries. Egypt, Jordan and Iraq have expanded their trilateral cooperation mechanism that was launched in 2019 in several fields including energy, industry, agriculture, transport, food security, infrastructure and investment. In June, Egypt, Jordan and Iraq announced they were close to completing a power linkage project between the electricity grids of the three countries as well as setting up an industrial city on the Iraqi-Jordanian border. By the beginning of 2023, Jordan is expected to supply Iraq with electricity after the required infrastructure is completed. Egypt, which lies more than 800 miles away from Iraq, also plans to deliver electricity to Iraq via Jordan by linking the three countries' power grids. Foreign Minister Sam Ashokri said the project will bring power to Iraq from Egypt and Jordan and will enable expanding industrial activity in Iraq. The Jordanian foreign minister also announced the three countries have completed around 90 percent of preparations required to launch the new industrial city. In July, Bahrain joined the Integrated Industrial Partnership Initiative with Egypt, the UAE and Jordan. So far, 12 projects worth 3.4 billion U.S. dollars have been identified by the four countries in the first phase of the 10 billion U.S. dollars initiative signed in May. The next stage will focus on metals, chemicals, plastics and textile industries. As part of the expanded partnership, the private sector is to implement 87 projects for livestock, fertilizers, production and pharmaceuticals. Meanwhile, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the Bahraini King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa witnessed the signing of several agreements and memoranda of understanding between Egypt and Bahrain in various domains, including that of science, technology, education and logistics. Also, Egypt, Bahrain and Jordan agreed in a summit held in Sharm el-Sheikh on the importance of strengthening ties between the three nations to the highest levels. During the summit, Sisi said Egypt aspires to further cooperate with Bahrain and Jordan to achieve the common interests of the peoples of the three nations, as well as boost joint Arab action, particularly amid the challenges of multiple regional and international developments. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio to shed more light on this huge Arab summit by Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of Geopolitical Affairs at the University of Paris. Dr. Amir, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, first off, now, this is, it's, it's, it's a big uh, meeting between five Arab leaders, Egypt, the UAE, Jordan, Bahrain, and uh, the Iraqi Prime Minister. Now, before we start delving into the trilateral uh, mm -hmm. connections and the details of the initiatives mm -hmm. of these leaders, how would you uh, evaluate and rate this, uh, this meeting that is taking place in Lalamein city at the north coast? Well, um, it's a sign that there is an urgency to uh, coordinate between all the Arab countries in this region. We all know that the geopolitical situation in, in the Middle East uh, and in, in, in the international arena also is very volatile now. Uh, if there will be no coordination, I think that um, many things will be uh, uh, heading to a dangerous path. Mm -hmm. So I think that the fact that President Sisi decided to um, gather all these Arab leaders, that means that um, there is an urgency to find a common policy towards what is going on in the Middle East about many topics, um, many, many security topics especially, mm -hmm. uh, and about also uh, the economic situation in, in this region because we all know that uh, the, the Middle East now is the hub of energy mm -hmm. and is under pressure from the West and also from Russia 
and they are trying to the Arab countries trying to find a midway between both superpowers yes well before we start talking about the five altogether uh, putting aside uh, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain now Egypt Jordan and Iraq have met since March 2019 about four times now talking about those three countries I mean March 2019 that's even before the uh, coronavirus pandemic before the Ukraine-Russia mm. conflict. What really binds especially those three Arab countries? What sort of interests in terms of uh, economic uh, interests or political interests that binds those three countries for them to actually meet four times since 2019? Also, President Sisi uh, went there to, uh, to Baghdad in, uh, in 2021. Uh, which is one of the first, uh, one of the very few Egyptian visits to Baghdad recently. Well, the first topic is uh, fighting terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, Iraq, we all know what happened uh, during the uh, 2014's attack of uh, the Islamic State Daesh. We all know that this country was hit by severe um, um, severe attacks from numerous groups, Al-Qaeda, uh, Daesh, uh, uh, other affiliates, uh, groups from uh, Iran also. Yes. And the same thing was with, um, with uh, Jordan. Jordan was also on the front line, the war against uh, um, the Islamic State uh, organization. So we all know that in these two countries are in the same um, trench with Egypt in fighting terrorism. We have to uh, acknowledge that we all need three states. We need coordination on the level of uh, expertise, uh, coordination in the info, because this war is about the war of ter against terrorism. It's about uh, information. When you get the information, you know from where the finance begins mm -hmm. to which branch and wha what are the, l the levels of these attacks. So I think that our um, security and intelligence services of three countries should always work together around the clock. And uh, the fact that it's always trilateral summit, that means that there is a very important uh, um, organization between the three countries on the highest level because it's a question of um, um, of sustainable um, uh, let's say sustainable um, security for the country uh, Jordan is fighting terrorism and we all know about Egypt of course mm -hmm. we're fighting terrorism uh, since uh, 2011 now and we are fighting it in, in the, uh, on the Libyan front, we're fighting in, on the e eastern front in Sinai, and we're fighting also in the, uh, on this, in the sea, because we all know they're trying to infiltrate Egypt by all means. So um, the three countries should organize their ranks, they should work together. Another topic is the electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have many <coughs> projects between uh, Egypt, uh, Jordan, and Iraq, Egypt is providing and selling electricity to both countries, as we are doing with Lebanon also. So I think that um, this is a vital, uh, um, a vital uh, issue because electricity is very uh, important uh, to all these countries, especially Iraq and Jordan because of the population, the uprisings, it could cause uh, many problems in these countries. They are, both countries are in a fragile way. Mm -hmm. So they want all, all, always the commodities, the electricity, the water, all the supplies be always prepared. So we have to help these leaders to confront all these challenges because for example, if the security, if the electricity goes out in any of these countries, you could have the next day uprisings in the, in the, in the streets um, and people will uh, and, and other external forces will use that against these governments. So we have to help them to be prepared always and to uh, repel any interference from outside their countries. Yes. Well, there has <coughs> been uh, a lot of agreements and cooperation, as you've said, in terms of energy, agriculture, mm. infrastructure. Now, 
you've explained how we are helping Jordan and Iraq, and you've talked about the, uh, the cooperation in terms of intelligence and information, especially in combating terrorism. What are they adding or giving uh, or putting on the table for Egypt? Well, <clears throat> as I said, the info. Mm -hmm. First of all, we, also, we all know that Daesh started from Iraq. And we all know that um, the first country that um, uh, literally fell under the grip of uh, Daesh was uh, Iraq. So we all we know that uh, unfortunately, after the U.S. invasion to 20 uh, in 2003, uh, we all know that this country lost a lot of its security capacity. Mm -hmm. So all the terrorist groups go there and they work there and they start from there. So we need the info. We need the information. We need to work with these countries. If we will leave uh, Iraq in the hands of Iran, it will be a huge uh, strategic loss that we cannot afford. So we have to work with the government there to, to ask them to provide us with the info, mm -hmm. provide us also with, um, let's say, uh, the expertise, because they fought terrorism also on, on many levels. Um, Jordan, well, they are helping us uh, in, in, in containing any problems between Israel and the Palestinians. So we have to be mm -hmm. both Egypt and Jordan working on it. We are, we are uh, working with uh, the Gaza Strip and Hamas, and this is a huge problem. We have to always deal with it. And in the same time, Jordan is working with the Palestinian Authority in the, in the West Bank. So uh, we have to be two sides working together on this issue, especially that we know that there is still on the table uh, for the Americans the confederacy uh, to create a confederal state between the Palestinians and Jordan, which means killing the, um, the, the, the peace process or the Palestinian cause. So um, this would not be a good idea strategically for Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to work with the Jordanians to endorse them and tell them also. So what they are giving us, they are giving us the, their, their, their aid in containing the Palestinian cause it, uh, that it would not collapse. Mm -hmm. Well, Jordan as well is, is cooperating with Egypt and the United Arab Emirates and mm. the three of them have launched a, a development, an integrated uh, developmental uh, initiative partnership for sustainable economic development that was launched in uh, Abu Dhabi worth $10 billion. Now, how can those three countries in specific really maximize the benefit of launching a huge $10 billion worth initiative to achieve uh, a certain level of sustainable economic development and sustainable development is the name and the language of the game right now. Well, we all know that uh, uh, Iraq is a fertile land mm -hmm. and they have our agriculture uh, products and we could ex exchange with them. Um, by the way, uh, both Egypt and Iraq, we are facing the same uh, uh, threats about the water uh, we have the problem with the Renaissance Dam with Ethiopia, and they have the problem with the dams of Turkey. They are mm -hmm. they are trying to literally destroy the Euphrates and uh, to destroy their uh, economic and agriculture uh, products. So um, we are working together so we could have more projects very uh, sufficient. To, to, to ensure the, the, um, the security of our populations, the food security. Mm -hmm. um, same thing for Jordan. Uh, we, we always hear in the news that uh, there are some mm, places, provinces in Jordan where there are uprising because there is no uh, commodities there, um, um, no more supplies. So we have to uh, uh, help the government there. Uh, of uh, King Abdullah II to have uh, economic uh, projects with their neighbors because unfortunately they only have a uh, few places where they could uh, have a fertile land. 
Um, so we are working with Jordan also to help this country economically, because if not, the consequences will be very, very hard for all of us. Mm -hmm. So um, investing is very important now. Uh, um, and I, I know that we are uh, the, the three countries, especially Iraq and Jordan, are going through a very tough time economically. Uh, and we are doing the same thing. We are, we're going through uh, tough times and all do, uh, you look at Europe, it's mm -hmm. doing very bad now. So I think um, if you will invest every penny now in these projects, it's, it's time to do it because we all know what we went through in 2011 was disastrous mm -hmm. and we don't want to repeat it anymore. Yes. So <coughs> later on Bahrain joined mm -hmm. those four countries and mainly Egypt and Jordan uh, and the UAE. Now Bahrain attended the second higher committee for uh, industrial development and partnership in Cairo. Now, Bahrain is known for its uh, aluminum ores, the, uh, the, the, the iron, all of these really essential raw materials. What can Bahrain uh, offer for these sort of countries and the partnership amongst these countries? Well, it's very important that we make Bahrain um, uh, de uh, economically developed in, in, this, uh, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. that it won't be um, only, um, let's say, uh, an island of oil and raw materials. No, mm -hmm. we have to help them to export. We have to help because we know that this country, specifically Bahrain, is being strangled by Iran. And they're trying to diminish uh, the, the power of the, the kingdom there. They're trying to, uh, once again, uprisings, the, to, to instigate uprisings with the Shia population. So. The, uh, the, 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 the tunnel that will help us rescue this country is the economic um, development. We have to uh, have our projects there and their projects come to Egypt also and in the Arab countries. So this, this island won't be isolated and in the hands of Iran. Mm -hmm. So um, of course they have a lot to give us. And we also have the, 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 the working uh, people who could go there and work there. So the population there will be always uh, in, within the Arab uh, Sunni sphere. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to uh, work on the economic level in, to ensure that these countries will be safe. And we would not let any outside insurgency destabilize the country or just uh, instigate any uh, violence there that would harm uh, the governing um, uh, hierarchy there. Mm -hmm. So these five countries, they are all having uh, initiatives, economic cooperations, investments, and in a way it mm -hmm. is influencing the political uh, nature of these countries domestically and regionally as well. Now, would it be, I mean, is five a good number for such uh, an inter-Arab cooperation and initiatives, both economically and politically, or would you like to see more countries joining in? Or if more countries are joining in, would there be uh, some sort of uh, a danger or a risk of really diluting the effect of this whole cooperation, especially economically? Well, if we speak about the Gulf states, the more we have countries, it will be very good. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's true because they have less population and they have also uh, the economic means. Uh, why not uh, the Sultanate of Oman? Uh, they could join and uh, uh, we all know that the Sultanate of Oman does not uh, regard or it regards itself as Switzerland uh, of the, uh, the Middle East politically. I mean mm -hmm. that they are neutral. We're not asking them to join any military or diplomatic uh, alliances. We're just uh, exposing the case of all these countries who need uh, economic aid. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, Oman could be a very important player there. I'm not mentioning Saudi Arabia because we, will, we all know that Saudi Arabia now is, al is also facing tough times concerning the pressure from uh, the United States and Europe 
uh, and Russia uh, right. for the uh, oil production. So uh, we should leave them alone for a while now mm -hmm. uh, until the, they settle all that. Um, so I think that uh, the Emirates were present. Why not the Sultanate of Oman? Uh, Kuwait, they have some uh, internal problems. They're trying to deal with them. Um, so uh, I think, and well, Qatar, uh, I don't know what's, what's really uh, going on in their minds now, but let's wait and see. So uh, I, I think that more countries could join and it will be very helpful. Um, I was really, um, um, it was really something that, that, uh, that was really weird that Lebanon was not invited because Lebanon needs huge help. Mm -hmm. But I think that the fact that the political situation there are, is still unstable is not giving the assurances to the leaders to sit down with uh, Michel Aoun and other, uh, and the Prime Minister uh, Mekati also, and to talk about the economic aid. Mm -hmm. So Lebanon has a special case also. It needs help. But I think that the fact that Hezbollah is very present, that the situation is very tense there, maybe this, I join you at the point that it could destabilize the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one thing the five countries have agreed on uh, was the first phase of the $10 billion initiative. Uh, more than ab about 12 major uh, projects worth about $3.4 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, the second phase will include uh, investment mm -hmm. and cooperation in the fields of chemicals, plastics, textiles, all these things. Now. Are all these initiatives and projects a long-term goal? Are they long-term projects? Or are they projects that we will actually bear the fruit of right now? Are these projects that will help us come out or deal with the Ukraine-Russian conflict? Or are these much more longer term? Well, uh, it depends. If it's the agriculture, it will be uh, longer term because mm -hmm. we don't, for example, for the, the Russian-Ukrainian uh, uh, conflict, uh, well, uh, the problem that we have is uh, the grains. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we, are, uh, uh, we don't have the possibility to exchange it now between us. Every country is keeping its own products for, for itself. But in other things, I think that we could help each other in, um, in some small trades. This could be done immediately. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, the, there is a main problem is the currencies of these countries, especially Egypt, Jordan, and, and Iraq, uh, that uh, we are trying to work hard to uh, withstand the storm, the international storm. For mm -hmm. example, today, the dollar has sur surpassed for the first time since 20 years uh, the, the euro. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a huge blow to the EU today. So um, I think that uh, we have to work uh, to strengthen uh, our uh, monetary systems uh, and choose the, the, the fastest way to ensure this cooperation. Because yes, for the long term, it's very good. But still, let's not forget that we have uh, around the clock changes in all the world, uh, changes in the geopolitical situation. The superpowers are playing a huge game that we rematch all the world again. So uh, it's a real, uh, I don't want to say world war, but let's say world storm mm -hmm. that we, f we are part of it. So <laughs> is inter-Arab cooperation, economic cooperation, really a solution to uh, sustain some sort of uh, economic activity and economic development, especially at a time where a lot of the Western countries, uh, the <coughs> Americas, or the Far East are maybe a little bit hesitant to sign a lot of cooperation agreements or investments during a time of economic crises as a result of mm. the COVID and the Ukraine uh, issue. There are uh, huge um, problems now in Europe, mm -hmm. and they are the most uh, trusted um, investors that we could work with now, especially, especially in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, they are waiting for the winter. They were, they're saying that <laughs> the next winter will be very tough. So if 
they are really in a shaky position. I think that um, we, we should not be very optimistic now about the situation. We, are very, we should be very cautious. Mm -hmm. We have to work around the clock to ensure that even if there will be no, um, less, uh, no investments from the EU in the coming uh, months, we could have our uh, investments here between the regional countries. Um, I think that the Emirates, that's, we didn't mention the Emirates, we need investors from the Emirates because if there won't be German investors uh, because of the war between Russia and Ukraine or uh, French or British, let's say that we could have the alternative and the alternative is uh, Saudi Arabia and, and the Emirates. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this, this is what, what made uh, Egypt's policy very uh, smart from the beginning, that we worked uh, from the beginning working with all the Arab countries and the regional countries and the African countries because we have put in mind that one day maybe Europe won't be able to uh, invest. Mm -hmm. And apparently we are heading towards this um, point. Mm -hmm. So I think that Egypt... Uh, is leading the Arab world in, 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 in spreading this awareness that we cannot depend anymore on the EU. You have seen what's going on there. Uh, if we want to work together, and this is what President Sisi used to tell the youth in the, uh, in the, uh, in the conferences, mm -hmm. if you want to build your own countries, no one will come and build it for you. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing now. Europe is not, uh, it has its own problems. Uh, their economy is very shaky now. Uh, Russia is playing a very smart game now. Um, we have good relations with the Americans also, so we can. Um, it's very difficult for the whole Middle East to side only with Russia. Uh, we have our heart with Russia, but our brains are with the United <coughs> States. Yes. So it's a very difficult task mm -hmm. for all these leaders now. Well, if Europe is bracing <coughs> for winter, Shouldn't Egypt be uh, an alternative for energy now? I mean, we're very uh, known and established now in the liqu uh, liquefaction of natural gas. We have the Zohr gas field. We have our agreements with Cyprus and Greece. So as winter approaches, shouldn't Egypt be a good alternative for energy and natural gas, especially that we are trying to be established as a major energy hub? Well, as you said, we are trying. Mm -hmm. We didn't achieve this point now. Why? Because um, um, we, are, we just began exploiting our, uh, our uh, energy resources since when? Uh, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was very hard for us because we had to settle uh, the compromises with our neighbors. We know that Turkey is trying to harass us. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are trying to organize also. There is a huge dispute between uh, Lebanon and, and, and Israel concerning the, uh, the Lewisan um, uh, um, gas field in the Mediterranean. So um, the situation is not very easy to export mm -hmm. as people think that everyone is asking we have all these fields why we don't uh, do it uh, right away no it needs a uh, very uh, slow process that you will make all compromises and let's not forget something very important we do not want to anger also our friends in Russia mm -hmm. And they want, you know, uh, let's be frank, the, the, uh, the Western Front wants us to go into this trap and to tell the Russians, well, we don't need you anymore, we can rep replace the Russians, and then uh, our strategic relations with Moscow will be very, very, very uh, fragile at that time. Mm -hmm. And we don't wish to see that. So we have to calculate very well the situation. We won't replace Russia with the sanctions. We have to be very aware that the Russians are waging a huge war with the gas fields. And uh, if we go into this war, that means that you are uh, facing the Russian bear mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And we don't need this now. Yes. Well, one thing Egypt <coughs> is excelling at is actually its exports to Bahrain, Jordan, and Iraq. Now it recorded an increase in the Egyptian exports to those three countries in the first half of the fiscal year 2021-2022. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. Egypt's exports to the three Arab countries, Bahrain, Jordan and Iraq, have increased in 2021 and the first quarter of the fiscal year 2021-2022. According to the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics, CAPMAS, a report issued said Egypt's exports to Bahrain hit 450.7 million U.S. dollars in 2021 compared to 139.3 million in 2020 which is an increase of 223.5 percent on the other hand egypt's imports from bahrain in 2021 amounted to 466 and a half million u.s dollars compared to 261.7 million u.s dollars an increase of 78.2 percent trade exchange between Egypt and Bahrain surged 128.7 percent during the previous fiscal year to reach 917.2 million U.S. dollars, up from 401 million U.S. dollars in 2020. According to CAPMAS, remittances from Egyptian expatriates in Bahrain recorded 104 million U.S. dollars during the previous fiscal year, an 18.5 percent decrease from 127.7 million compared to the 2020-21 fiscal year. Meanwhile, remittances of Bahraini expatriates in Egypt amounted to 1.9 million U.S. dollars, compared to 1.8 million during the fiscal year 2020-2021, an increase of 1.2 percent. Bahraini investment in Egypt amounted to 160.4 million U.S. dollars during the fiscal year 2020-21, compared to 174.6 million during the previous fiscal year. Meanwhile, in the case of Jordan, Egypt's exports to the Hashemite Kingdom increased during the first quarter of 2022 to 198.9 million U.S. dollars, up 10.5 percent from 180 million U.S. dollars recorded during the same period of 2021. Egypt's imports from Jordan hit 62.5 million during the first quarter of this year, up 51.2 percent from the 41.3 million U.S. dollars recorded during the same period a year earlier. Trade exchange between Egypt and Jordan recorded 361.4 million U.S. dollars during the first quarter of 2022, up from 221.3 million during the same period of 2021, which is an increase of 18. 0.1%. The value of Jordanian investments in Egypt is estimated at 56.7 million during the fiscal year 2020-21, down from 58.4 million during the previous fiscal year. CAPMAS also published a report on trade between Egypt and Iraq. According to the report, trade exchange between Egypt and Iraq increased 14.1% in the first quarter of 2022 recording 147.3 million U.S. dollars up from 129.1 million in the same period last year. Egypt's exports to Iraq hit 141.8 million in the first three months of the year, up from 124.1 million U.S. dollars in the corresponding period in 2021. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Dr. Amir. Now, we're talking about these cooperations among all these five Arab countries. And in the meantime, we're also prepping for the COP27 mm. that will be taking place in less than three months from now. So with everyone sort of from the European countries and uh, the developed uh, international community, maybe going through their own domestic and global crises, 
economic ones may be being hesitant in terms of investment and funding other develop, uh, developing countries in terms of sustainable development and climate change. Do you think that inter-Arab and inter-African countries would actually be enough to, to really make the, the, the money allocated or the funding allocating for the developing countries enough to, to float? No, of course not. We have to work with other countries, the superpowers, of mm -hmm. course, because they have <clears throat> the means and they have the, the money to um, work on the sustainable energy and the, the, the green energy. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget that we have uh, the lands, we have the, the, um, the solar systems, we have the water also. So uh, this could be attractive for the foreign investment in this field and um, we could show the world that we could work with other countries uh, on these uh, levels that this is not the third world that, as they think no mm -hmm. we have plans in saving energy we have plans in in, in saving the, the, the um, uh, fighting the climate change uh, but as, as, as I said, there is confrontation between the superpowers now, and I don't think that they are uh, really um, <clears throat> interested now in the climate change. They are interested in wars and territories and gas fields, oil fields, uh, stock exchange, and that's what they are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, our part is to tell them, well, do not neglect this part of the world because the Middle East is not only, only, only a barrel of oil. Mm -hmm. No, the, the Middle East also is agriculture, it's also solar systems, it's everything that you can find in, if you want to work with the energy system. Mm -hmm. Well, if we are talking about the COP27 and the climate change and sustainable development, Egypt is really working hard in terms in this field. I mean, we're talking about about producing uh, hydrogen, uh, ammonia, uh, the windmills, the, the renewable energy as a whole. Now, do you feel that other Arab countries and other African states are exerting the same sort of effort? I mean, we are showcasing our work in terms of uh, a green city like Sharm el-Sheikh, for instance, and the new Alamein city, a smart city, fourth generation, along with many other uh, new cities in Egypt. Are the rest of the Arab countries, are the rest of the African states exerting as much effort to showcase this sort of work and the sort of serious intention in COP27? Um. I think that we are uh, giving the good signs mm -hmm. to, to the whole world uh, with these cities. Um, they, ha they can come and see by their own eyes uh, Charm Sheikh and the new Alamein city. Um, they know that we have invested money in that. And when we uh, ask for um, uh, financial aid for these uh, projects, we were not using them elsewhere. We use them exactly as we have asked it to do in the field of uh, uh, sustainable energy. So this gives the West also and our uh, other investors uh, the assurance that if they invest the money in these countries like Egypt, for example, they are investing in, this, in the right place. It's going into these projects. But the, it's not enough to give the first funding and then things slow down mm -hmm. no we have to uh, give more uh, attention we have to in the cop 27 we have to tell them that you have to work again with us continuously because if not everything will collapse mm -hmm. well you've mentioned that um, one of the things uh, is agriculture and egypt along with uh, some of the other five countries are having their water issues yes. now in terms of having the economic influencing the political influence. Can those five countries have some, some sort of effect on the, the Renaissance uh, Dam issue with Ethiopia or ha does this uh, issue with Ethiopia need a different kind of crowd? Well, the Emirates, they have their say in this. Mm -hmm. We all know that there is investment in Ethiopia from the Emirates and it's very important. And 
it's also in the Renaissance dam, but the, the, our, our brothers in Emirates did not notice from the beginning that this could harm Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's why we are coordinating with them, because they also have their say in the investment because the Renaissance Dam is what it's what what's the Renaissance Dam It's just uh, a global um, uh, investment it's not the money of the Ethiopians mm -hmm. so I think that this could be a very important that we have an ally uh, a regional ally from the Arab world that could say its world uh, also uh, concerning the rest of the countries for example Iraq Jordan and and Bahrain uh, we all know that uh, the case of uh, the Renaissance Dam was brought to the UN so we need votes mm -hmm. we need blocks working with us people who are uh, working with the Egyptian diplomacy around the clock to ensure that we have our rights so the more you have votes the more you give credibility to your case. And this is what we need to do right now, to gather all these countries. And of course, a country like the Emirates, they could say something to Addis Ababa about what's going on. And I'm not saying stop the funding, but at least make the pressure on the government there to uh, slow down or to sit on the table and negotiate with us. Mm -hmm. Well, when those five countries, Egypt, the UAE, Bahrain, Jordan and Iraq uh, met, they discussed a lot of issues of mutual concern, signed a lot of agreements, energy, mm -hmm. plastics, textiles, infrastructure, all these things. What do you think is the highest on the agenda that we should be really hoping for as a result of this five way summit or is it a political one regional security mm -hmm. regional security i think that countries like iraq and jordan both and, and bahrain the three countries are in a very uh, in a very they have a very uh, uh, heavy burden mm -hmm. uh, bahrain against iran we have uh, Jordan uh, trying to ensure its security around the clock. Uh, Iraq is facing terrorism, uprisings, interference from, the, from uh, Iran and from Turkey and from the Kurds also. They want their independence. So this is very fragile there. Um, Egypt is fighting terrorism. Egypt is trying to rebuild its economy um, all by, um, by itself now because of the recession in all the, the, the whole world. And we have the Emirates that has a voice in the Middle East and in the, the international arena. So it's about sec uh, security, regional security. And we all know that the Arab world has been taking us a hostage between mm -hmm. the US and Russia in this war about oil production. Iraq is an oil, oil production country like Bahrain. So we all know that these countries are under pressure from the US to try to neglect uh, Russia, to take a side against Russia. And we are, if we want to work together to say to the Americans, listen to us, we will be treated as separate countries and every country will have its own share of blackmail so it will abandon uh, its cooperation with Russia. Mm -hmm. So you think that having these countries, can, I mean, can they create a bloc that would withstand the American influence or Russian influence or even the Iranian influence? I mean, I Iran is currently in discussions to reactivate its nuclear pact with these countries. Yeah. Do you think that this bloc, the, the core, the five countries, and maybe some other Gulf countries can join as well. Can they withstand all these sort of influence and maybe wane the Iranian influence a little bit? Uh, uh, well, uh, look, every country, let's be frank, every country is working uh, with, for example, with the file of Iran differently. For example, Bahrain uh, wants security mm -hmm. and armed forces working around the clock fighting with them. Uh, look, uh, for example, the Emirates started negotiating with Iran mm -hmm. uh, because they said, well, we have to have a diplomatic approach. Uh, Iraq, it's very critical because of the Shia and the presence of Iran there. 
uh, like the Sadr movement, they have the uprising until this hour now. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. And we have Jordan, who is threatened also by Iran and needs support from a country like Egypt. This is very critical. Mm -hmm. And we have to work diplomatically and politically and on the military level also. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, a big meeting between the leaders of Egypt, manifested and present to Sisi, also the UAE, the uh, Jordan, Bahrain, Iraq, all these countries gathering in the new Alamein city. We're going to be following up on the developments and the outcomes of such a huge summit. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of Geopolitical Affairs at the University of Paris. Dr. Amir, always a pleasure having you with us on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Safe. Thank you for joining us.